Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about object storage. And object storage is a way where you can take something, whatever, it's bytes, it's strings, it's files, whatever it is, and put them into something where you store it and you give it a key. And that key should be unique and you, it doesn't really care about what the key is, but you have one key in that you seem to be unique, and then you have an object that you store there. And this is a very simplistic way to store things, and you can uh, se separate them into different buckets, but within each bucket, everything needs to be unique. So let's switch over to some uh, something here. Here is the Amazon uh, object storage and ha here I have Daniel's testing bucket and this is just created as is. I went into Amazon S3, created a new bucket, gave it all the standard, uh, standard settings and just gave it a name and this name needs to be unique for Amazon which is a little bit hard because they have a lot of customers but Daniel testing buckets seem to be unique so I have at least a bucket here and when I've created that one I need to go into my account up here and then my security credentials and in here you can create an access key and here is my access key and when you create that you will get one access key and then one access key secret. And you need to keep both of those in order to access your, um, your account. And I will not show you the access secret key because this account, I have a few buckets on it, so I don't want them to be open. But this is uh, how you set it up. You create a new access key here and you get some credentials. If we jump over to some code here, so this is my code here. If we look into this example here, we have something that gets an Amazon 3 uh, client and then we will list all my buckets. It's a very simple there. And then I will take this bucket name I have up here, Daniel testing bucket, and I will store my POM file <laughs> in the bucket and I get the POM file XML there, and then I will list all the things that are in my bucket, so I know which keys are in there. So this is very simple code, and if we look into the Amazon client here, you see that I get my credentials here, and I put them into a static credentials provider, and I create a standard S3 client with credentials with the region. This time I use the US East one and I build that and return that S3 client. So that's how you create an Amazon client. And if we run this one, it will go through and list the buckets I have on Amazon and then it will store this POM file. It takes a little bit while because it needs to talk to Amazon and there it had to send it over and we see that we have it in our store. If we switch over to the Amazon here, go back to the bucket, we will see that we have stored the POM file here within the bucket and it's an XML file. So that's how you store in a bucket on Amazon. But we have in an earlier video talked about setting up a Seth cluster and that's to have almost an unlimited large file storage. So you have a disk that you mount and it can be how large it gets when you put a lot of computer into your clusters. So this is my running cluster here. We see that the health is okay and I have three OSDs. I didn't start the fourth one, but this is my cluster here and I have some files stored in it. And if we look here, we have object gateway. So here we have 
my demons. I set up a few demons. We have my users here. I have a uh, test account here. And if we look at this test account here, we have a keys tab. And under this keys, we have S3 keys and I can show those. So here we have the key material for my local storage for this S3 account. If we look under buckets, I have created this Daniel test bucket here. So I have the same bucket locally on my SEPT cluster. And in order to get this to work, to have your object storage in your SEPT cluster, you need to do a few changes. It's not much, but if you have used the uh, guide that I had uh, earlier to set up your SEPT cluster using Ansible, we can look into the Ansible host file. Let's see here, and Ansible etc, uh, Ansible hosts. So here we see that we have the setup that we had before and what I have added is RGVs. And I use the monitors, the same moni as the, uh, the monitors and the managers. So I have the same service for you for this uh, gateway as well. And this stands for a Radus gateway service. So uh, that's what you need to set up here and it will install that for you. But uh, you also need to look into the uh, uh, groups vars all. And here you need to add the, um, let's see here where I can find it. Yeah, Radus gateway interface. So if you're using the interface setup that I did up here with the monitor interface, you do the same for the Radus interface. You can supply an address instead or a port, but I thought as all the machines have the same interfaces, it's much easier for me to say, this is the interface that I want to connect on. So that's how you set up this Radus uh, uh, object storage gateway. If we switch over to the Amazon client here and I switch over to the local one and we can look at how that is set up. And here you see that I have access credentials, my local credentials, my, I have my access key. That's the same as the access key for the Amazon storage. And then I have my secret key and that's the same as the secret key for my Amazon storage. So that's equivalent to the ones that I use for my Amazon storage. They are different, of course, but it's exactly the same way you do to uh, use credentials here. Then I create an Amazon client with a builder. I put those credentials in, and then I say I want an endpoint configuration here. And this endpoint configuration don't want a signing region, but I want a service point. And here I put in my monitor one of the monitors, and then I put a port. If you want to have failover uh, over all your uh, cluster members where you have the object storage installed, you can put that behind a proxy because this is just an um, HTTP request or an HTTPS request. And I had to put HTTP here because it's defaulting to HTTPS. And in this case, I don't have any SSL set up. Uh, and then we have uh, this a very important ad addition here with path style access enabled uh, true. So usually when you uh, access a bucket in the Amazon store, you have Daniel uh, testing bucket dot um, e perhaps US East one Amazon.com. So usually you put the bucket in the beginning of the URL. With this change, you put it at the end instead. And that's important for SEPT cluster because it will not require you to have a lot of different domains for your SEPT cluster. So this makes things much easier for you. So we put that in here and then build. And now my local client should work exactly the same as my Amazon bucket uh, running. 
So if I run that against my local cluster, it says that I have one bucket and it puts the palm in the bucket. So that's how you set up an Amazon client um, in Java in order to talk to your object storage in Amazon Cloud. And then if you want to switch that over to use your Ceph cluster instead to store your objects, it's very similar. It's very, it's just changing a few points of your setup and you're up and running with your local storage instead. And of course you can use both of them if you want to have a failover and save information in both clouds. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Are you using object storage in your organization? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I read all of them. Or if you have any other questions or suggestions, leave them there as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.